everyone. I'm the Tox Girl. Today we're going to talk about utilizing purchase orders in QuickBooks Online. So this is the homepage for ABC Creative, which is a fictitious company that we use for these videos. Um, in order to start using purchasing orders, you have to turn them on first. Um, so in order to do so, you can go to the upper right hand corner, click on the gear icon, and then you are going to go to accounts and settings. Over here on the left hand side, you are going to navigate to expenses. And then here we are going to turn purchase orders on. We can create custom transaction numbers if we would like. So when we click on this, this will give you a little bit more information. So this is going to allow us to use our own numbering system with purchase orders. Um, if you don't turn this on, the books is going to assign a sequential purchase order. That can be an internal control, sequential purchase orders. Um, so we don't necessarily want to turn this on unless we're going to be one of the only ones in here issuing purchase orders. Um, but when you turn this on, you can also decide if you want a default message on the purchase order. <clears throat> so I turned this on and I did not put that we should be allowed to have custom PO numbers. Okay. Now that it is on, let's go ahead and create a purchase order. There's a couple of ways that you can create a purchase order. You can come here to, exp to expenses and you can go to purchase orders and put create purchase orders. You can also just navigate to purchase orders here. You can also use the plus new button and click purchase orders. <clears throat> okay, so this is what the purchase order looks like. You're gonna choose a vendor. And at this point in time, we're going to have this purchase order is open, right? So we have not received these items. We are going to have it potentially shipped to um, a customer if we would like it delivered there, or we could have it shipped to us. You want to put the purchase order date. And if you have a shipping method that you would like, you can enter it here. From here, we are going to either have categories or items. Now, you're going to use categories um, and are going to be things like contract labor, insurance. These are going to tie to your chart of accounts. So these would tie to some sort of expense account within your chart of accounts. So maybe we're creating a PO um, for insurance or something along those lines. Item details. This is going to be a particular item. So these are going to be um, items or potentially services that we are purchasing from a vendor, okay? So we could put, you know, we are gonna place a PO for turtle keychains. Um, we are gonna have the number of quantity here. So we wanna purchase 200 of these, <clears throat> oops. We wanna purchase 200 of these for $2,000 total. And then potentially in the description, we can put, you know, um, 50% blue, and then maybe 25% green, 25% orange. <clears throat> we can also put a message to the vendor here, and we can put a memo. Now, the message to the vendor will show up on the actual PO, and the vendor will see that. The memo is internal, so this will stay to us, okay? Um, so this is, again, we're gonna put our vendor information. We're gonna have, it's gonna automatically put their mailing address here. So we would need to have a mailing address um, or an email. We can ship it to a customer if we would like, or we can have it shipped to us. You're gonna put your purchase order date. And then if you have a shipping preference, you can put ship via. If we choose category, details, um, this is going to tie to an expense account on our card account. So this would be appropriate if we were uh, issuing a PO for something like insurance or something along those lines. And if you have a small business, this might not be something that you do. You might not put together a PO for something along with insurance. Um, so this 
you might not end up using. You might more have POs for things like products or services that you're purchasing from particular vendors. <clears throat> so keep in mind that if you select a actual product here that you're tracking inventory of, um, when, when you fill this PO or when your vendor fills this PO, it is going to affect your inventory, okay? You can move down here and you can either put a message to the vendor and or a memo for internal use. You can also add any attachments. Um, so attachments that you might put on a PO order um, or a purchase order would be things like a quote maybe from the vendor, um, specifications on that particular item or product or service. Um, maybe you want to put a request document from your warehouse or your manufacturing team, something that ties to your purchase order for internal documentation purposes. <clears throat> from here, you can print it, you can make it recurring, we can save it, or we can save in new or save in set. So let me kind of explain what all of these mean. You would print this if you wanted to have a physical PO, okay? that you could hand to somebody. You would make it recurring if like maybe every two weeks we're gonna order 200 of these certifications. You can set it up to make it a recurring PO. If you save it, it's just gonna save it into the system and then it's not going to do anything else with it, okay? If you save and close, it is literally going to save and then close the screen. If you save and new, it will save and then pop up a brand new PO screen. Or we can save and send. And at this point in time, we can email this PO to our vendor. Um, so maybe you have a vendor that accepts POs via email. Oh, it wants an email in here. So I am just gonna put an email here. <clears throat> and so we can just put save and send, <clears throat> and then it will send the email. So it's going to say to, here's the email. Um, we can have it send us a copy. This is going to be the subject and this is the email body. Um, this is what it looks like and it will attach it via PDF. So we can send and close. Um, I'm just going to X out of this because I don't want to actually send it. So that is how you go ahead and do a purchase order. Um, at this point in time, if we refresh this, QuickBooks will now show us that we have a purchase order and that it is open. That means that we have not received these items and we have not received an invoice or anything like that. Um, so that is how you create a PO number or um, a PO purchase order. And I will show you in the next video what we do once we receive a PO. If this video was helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.